Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm late. Hey, Oz. Hey, Oz. Ah, wait. Okay, now my voice is turned up. I'll hear you again. Yeah, it's been kind of a ragged day. What can I tell you? Uh, Is, are, are other people hearing me, or is my voice messed up? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm not hearing anybody else. I hear you. Hmm. Ah, somebody give me a voice check. Say something. Hello, hello, hello. Test, test, test. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had been messing with audio devices to accommodate the setup that they had for the radio show. And I hadn't undone it all. Okay, I, we, we don't have a very full agenda today, I don't think. Uh, at least I don't. Um, we did just release the latest maintenance viewer, promoted that to the default viewer. Uh, so that's that's out. The uh, graphics quick preferences viewer is perilously close to to being ready to ship. Uh, obviously, it needs to be merged up to that new release. Um, the Bento project is continuing to make progress. Uh, we're we're close to. Uh, being able to declare that that's sufficiently stable to move content to Agni. Uh, so that should happen pretty soon. Uh, we are continuing to work on our Rift viewer port, uh, and hopefully we'll have an update of that real soon now. Uh, that will, of course, still be a project viewer, but um, at least it will be up to the, the latest uh, Oculus SDK and so forth. So... Uh, yeah. Uh, right after we get it. Uh, I, f I fixed that, Willie. I just haven't published that build yet. <clears throat> it, now it says Jelly Doll. We, we have adopted that term with enthusiasm. 
So uh, coming soon. Uh, and we've we've made some of the some of the uh, preferences easier to do. There's a control on the basic on on the basic screen for controlling the max avatar complexity, which is nice. Uh, but I think that's the big. Uh, oh, so we have another we have another viewer coming that has kind of been on hold for a while. Um, it was queued up behind HTTP and some other things, but it's we're waking it up, um, and that'll be coming out as a uh, at least a. I think it'll start out as a release candidate. Um, once we've done a round of QA on it, that deprecates some old uh, inventory APIs and shows how they should be replaced with new ones. Uh, when, you know, you should keep an eye on that as it's moving through the pipeline because once that code is out there and well validated, we will establish a time by which those older UDP-based inventory operations will be removed server-side. So that that day is coming, and you should be watching that. I'll I'll have something more specific for you when, when we actually push that viewer out so that you know which repo to be watching and making sure that you're you're picking up those changes. And we'll we'll talk with you about what the timeline should end up being on that. But uh, that's that project has been kind of on the back burner for a little while, but we're we're picking it up again and moving it forward. All part of trying to make inventory more robust. 64-bit uh, was making progress. We, we had to pull the developers off of it temporarily for other things. One of them is working on some internal stuff, and one of them is working on the uh, QuickTime remediation project. But uh, we'll get back to it. We're close. But uh, so that's that's sort of what's happening. Not a lot of new things. Our viewer with external chat. What's external chat? <laughs> so uh, that should, the fact that I'm asking that question should give you a hint. even thinking about working on that <clears throat> or any other windows outside the main window. That's not, not on the roadmap at all at this point. Hey, feel free to figure out how to do it. It's a purely viewer side problem. You guys can figure out how to do it cross platform. I, we will definitely take the contribution. But I'm not going to spend anybody on that. Yes. Uh. The first law of theory and practice. But in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is.
I'll tell you what, if we ever decide to completely start over with the rendering engine, we'll put that on the requirements list. Uh, never is a long time, <clears throat> but don't hold your breath. Uh, Naran, I say, I believe that the last action on that was we came back to you and said there were certain parts of it that we wanted separated out because we didn't want them and we haven't heard from you. Um, but I think that's something we should deal with in email. I'm more than happy to work through that. Uh, maybe. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take a look at that. I, one of the things I just got asked in the uh, lab chat was whether we were going to ever do better floater photography uh, improvements. And I, I said, yeah, I'd love to have that. So let's deal with it. But, you know, let's get, get the JIRA woken up and, and work through it. I'm happy to, I'm happy to work through contributions. That's, that's good stuff. Certainly, if I if I lost track of it and dropped the ball, I, I apologize. Any other big uh, big support issues from the third party viewer world that we should be alerted to? Yes, the freeze world thing we think is problematic.
Uh, yeah, I don't recall having seen any reports of that. So getting one. Um, I think he's asking we, whether you want one issue to cover all of the events or one issue per one, user. Yeah, one one issue would be good. Um, uh, obviously, we'll want it to be on some version of our viewer. Uh, and being very specific about exactly where and exactly what time it happened and getting that report in as quickly as possible after it happened is essential because we don't keep long logs on those things. So, uh, you know, if you report it a week later, we're not going to, it's not going to do us any good at all. We can't, we can't do anything with that. I don't, I don't know if a week is quite the right number, but it's, it's of that order. Get them to report, then it would be that day. Right. That day is certainly good enough. Yeah, and then and then if we can, you know, if we if we can get one Jira and then have people, you know, add comments to it saying it occurred with this viewer at exactly this time on exactly this region or in this group, whatever. Are, are you seeing it in primarily in group chat or in local chat, or is it both? It's actually it's just the user seeing it, and apparently it it happens everywhere, but it's different than what we have seen in the past where the um, even the user's posts are duplicated and everybody sees it. What we're, what we're being told now is that only the person reporting it is seeing double posts. So it's, it's, so it, the it's person not acting who's typing, like that packet loss thing. The, the person who's typing the message ends up seeing two copies of their own message, but everybody else only sees one? Uh, yeah, that's my experience with it, yeah. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. And we've seen oh, half a dozen yesterday and today so far. Uh, no, we haven't made any chat changes in recent, I think it's been weeks, if possibly even months. So I don't think we've done anything that should have affected chat. There's, there's coincidence with the, the roles this week, but we haven't done much more in the way of troubleshooting beyond eliminating uh, you know ISP similarities and region similarities huh yeah I, I mean you know uh, all that the stuff that goes over UDP it's pretty easy to imagine how you could get duplicate packets but we're supposed to have we're supposed to have detected that so uh, and, and you know, thrown away the dupes. So I don't know. But in any event, we haven't changed anything lately that I know of that would yeah. that should have affected this. Well, we'll try to get them to report uh, through the Linden viewer and uh, submit yeah. some some cases to you. And hopefully, there's something on the server side that yeah, if you can, if you can, might have a clue. Show that it's happening on the Linden viewer. Uh, at a particular time and place, maybe we can maybe we can track down why. I don't know. Cool. Well, we'll ask them. Uh, and there was a blog post just was it yesterday about um, getting your users upgraded to versions that support TLS 1.2. I know the latest Firestorm did, and I believe Alchemy has upgraded, and a couple others at least. Um, 
probably ought to be repeating that and pointing people at that uh, because otherwise at some point real soon now you're going to get a lot of people annoyed that they can't do things with money. And we want everybody to be able to do things with money. But we want them to be able to do it safely. That's good. Thank you. Now all you have to do is get your users to upgrade to those versions, right? Oh, that's great. Uh, Norton, I don't have any comment on that. <laughs> I think we can rule out the Raspberry Pi. Yeah.
You guys are awfully quiet today. So, do we get a half hour back? Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, I will see you in two weeks. Okay, same to you, Ross. Thank you.